Welcome back. Good to have you with us here at 530 on this Tuesday evening. I'm Jim Scott. And I'm Tammy Melchok. Thanks for joining us. Thursday marks the 70th anniversary of one of the most dramatic, deadly, and life-changing events in Kern County history, the earthquakes of the summer of 1952. Mm -hmm. For 33 days, starting on July 21st of 1952, local residents walked on pins and needles as one aftershock after another shook the county. 17's Robert Price has been researching the seismic legacy of the fateful summer of 52, and his half-hour special report will air this Thursday. Robert joins us now in studio with a preview. Jim, Tammy, we might call this special report 33 days that changed Bakersfield because that's exactly what they did. What was once an architecturally distinctive city disappeared over the course of a few years following this major earthquake, the third largest then and still in recorded California history. Many ar uh, architecturally significant buildings, including two old courthouses, were raised. Some survived pretty much intact. And then there was a third category, typified by the building we feature tonight, the Hopkins Building. Ever seen a ghost? You may say no, but if you've driven through downtown Bakersfield, you've gone right past one, right here on Chester Avenue. This is the four-story Hopkins Building, a skyscraper by Bakersfield's modest standards. But here's the asterisk. The top three stories are empty, deserted, an office building frozen in time, a Twilight Zone snapshot of the way it looked in the summer of 1952. The Kern County earthquake, actually a series of earthquakes and major aftershocks that started 70 years ago Thursday, roiled the area for 33 days. Those seismic eruptions destroyed some buildings and damaged others so significantly they had to be raised. Many survived nearly intact. And then, somewhere in between those fates, there is the Hopkins Building, not damaged enough to require demolition and not safe enough to occupy. And so it remains a silent commemoration of the earthquake that changed Bakersfield's downtown forever. Ground floor businesses are open, but upstairs an eerie, dusty silence pervades. The decaled glass doors communicating a forgotten past. An advertising agency, a dentist's office, a law firm, including the offices of attorney Jess Dorsey, the former Kern County District Attorney and State Senator, who 30 years before famously smashed the local Ku Klux Klan. Close your eyes and you can still hear the building's ringing phones, chattering typewriter keys, muffled conversations. Much of the city changed during those 33 days between July 21st and August 22nd when the aftershock we think of as the Bakersfield earthquake wrought its violence. But as the Hopkins building reminds us, some things, give or take a little peeling wallpaper, are precisely the same. I'll tell you more of the story of the 1952 earthquake coming up this Thursday. All right, going to have a special report. Looking forward to it. Thursday night, 7.30 for that special report. Bob, you know, we've all heard about the 1952 earthquake. I'm wondering, you know, how many Kern County natives or, for the three of us, transplants uh, really grasp how big those 33 days were in, in changing the landscape of our city? Jim, it was a really big national story, in fact. Uh, New York broadcasters didn't know how to pronounce Tehachapi, uh, which was the nearest town to the initial shock's epicenter. But the 7.3 magnitude Kern County earthquake was the strongest in California since the infamous 1906 San Francisco earthquake, which killed 3,000 people. In fact, the strongest then or since. It was a very big deal. Yeah, and you know, a lot of us have seen photos of Bakersfield from early in the past century. We were talking about the teens, the 20s and 30s, and it doesn't even look like the same place. It really doesn't, Tammy. Uh, Bakersfield had some world-class architects in the early years who essentially created some true works of art. Art Deco, Neo-Gothic, mm -hmm. Victorian, all sorts of decorative touches. But when the earthquake hit, first on July 21st and then the uh, final major aftershock on August 22nd, all of those artistic flourishes ended up rubble in the middle of the street never to be replicated. Wow. Yeah, the, after the first earthquake, a lot of that architecture remained in place, but it was severely structurally damaged inside, and it came down in the, in the sequence of earthquakes that followed. Right? Exactly, yeah. exactly right. Wow. All right, so your special airs, 7.30 p.m. Uh, this Thursday night, right here on TV 17, after a special edition of 17 News. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Thanks, All right, Bob. thanks, Bob. All right, take care.